authorized. I want to call this meeting to order. Uh, it's the uh, Thursday, June 25th uh, meeting for the, uh, I wasn't reading my title in my committee, the Anchorage Assembly Committee on Regulating and Taxing the Cultivation, Manufacture, and Commercial Sale of Marijuana in Anchorage. I've got the committee with the longest name in the entire city, so I take pride in that. Uh, we'll begin by uh, going around with an introduction of all of those at that table that are going to be the part of the uh, uh, presentation today, beginning with you, Erica. Erica McConnell with the current planning section. Seneca Pino, city prosecutor. Todd Sherwood, assistant municipal attorney. Sean Case, Anchorage Police Department. Ernie Hall. Pete Peterson. Welcome, everyone. And today I want to make a point that we have time for audience participation, whatever happens. So. Uh, we will get to that point, and uh, I will begin uh, with the fact that I think most of you are aware that at the last assembly meeting we did pass the resolution on uh, regulating marijuana smoke like tobacco smoke. Uh, there was a 90-day, thanks to Mr. Peterson, a grace period uh, that will allow for all businesses to be able to post proper signage and uh, prepare for the implementation. Uh, Mr. Schulte, would you join us up front? Well, the record reflects we've been uh, joined by Bruce Schulte, who is an ex official member of the board. Uh, and uh, with that piece of information shared, uh, Lieutenant Case, you're the first guy in. I don't really have anything for you. We're, we're, we're not really having any issues with, with enforcement or use right now. I think what we're kind of noticing is that the public is marching on as usual. Um, and we really don't expect any big changes until we start to get into the commercialization where it's more easily available sure. to the public. And of course, your busy time will come once we get ordinances, et cetera, into place, uh, getting new specific directions on what uh, is going to be legal or illegal, et cetera, and so forth. Correct. We're trying to keep up with the legal side of the house and planning and zoning so that when, when things get moving, we're, we're already in stride with them. Fantastic. Uh, we have anybody here from the Alcohol Control Board today? We are anxiously awaiting phase two, which is really going to be, uh, I think, the meat of what we're all going to be dealing with, and that has to do with licensing. Uh, it's my understanding that it is drafted. It will be going before the uh, uh, the control board. What, when did you tell me that was going to happen, Ira? July 2nd. July 6th. So once they see it, then it should go uh, up on their website where we will all get a chance to get a look at it. Because we actually had an intention this evening of kind of doing a scenario where we did a play out what you would have to do in order to be able to go through the licensing process. So you'll have that to look forward to at uh, the next meeting. We're, we're anxious to see that ourselves when it does become available. Uh, with that, then I will move on into the legal department. Todd, are you leading that discussion? Thank you. I'll, I'm going to just make some preliminary remarks uh, and then I'll get into some details here, but kind of tell you where we're going uh, in our little presentation. Uh, well, the first thing, just kind of preliminary, I did set at your places and on the table an article from the New York Times I just came across in Marijuana Business Daily entitled, Edible Marijuana Labels Often Have Potency Wrong. And, and there, there's a lot of information out there. This one I highlighted just because I think it's, as we go forward, as we look at state regulations, and they haven't gotten into this area yet, but it's been an area that Colorado is still trying to get a handle on and did new regulations after only a year of legalization. It's something that uh, Washington is working on, but it's an important area, and this is just one part of it that apparently um, they often don't have the potency right. And, and this kind of emphasizes the fact that for medical marijuana patients, it can be very important. But one of the things that, um, and we talked about this a little bit, but when Seneca and I visited some of the shops in Colorado during our training there, some were much better about, because we, we presented ourselves as new to it, and uh, 
like one was very good about, you know, if it's edibles, be careful, small amount, here's what a serving is, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all good, but if the labeling is incorrect on the amount of potency, be it of the THC, then all of that helpful advice doesn't help too much. So this is just kind of uh, for what it's worth for people to read. Um, Todd, if I might interrupt you for just a moment, I want the record to reflect that we've been joined by Ms. Dendowski, who's also a member of this committee. Thank you. And Amanda Mosher uh, from the clerk's and office. Amanda Mosher joined us as our staff representative. So our topic today was to talk about <coughs> licensing local control. I would preface that by saying um, in many ways we're still kind of where we were that we're waiting on the state. and. Yet, we're trying to do the things we can do now, and I'm sure Erica will talk more about that. Um, so one of the things we're doing, and this is what I'll talk about first, is we have commented on the state's initial set of draft regulations. Um, the other thing, uh, Seneca's office has drafted a number of proposed ordinances, and she'll talk about that in a minute, but one thing I want to emphasize about those ordinances, and you all have a set of those draft, and there's copies over there on the table. These are not being presented as uh, necessarily administration proposals, either this one or the next one, or from a certain assembly member or the assembly. These are ideas that came out of our discussions within the law department as things that the assembly might want to consider, the public might want to consider. They're basically a platform for discussion. And uh, so that's, that's really their, their purpose as we look at how can the municipality best <coughs> ensure maximum local control, which I think is largely a shared goal. So with that introduction out of the way then, I was going to talk a little bit about the first draft of the state regulations and so you've got a piece, it uh, looks like this. It doesn't really, it just says uh, commerce, community, and economic development at the top. That's what came off the state website. Do you have it there? Yes. Okay, make sure it's the right one. Okay. Yep. And anybody can go to it. The best way is just put in ABC Board Alaska, and there'll be a link. And then you'll go to the state website, and there'll be a link for everything about marijuana. The way they plan to do this, uh, I believe they're going to have three sets. There, set one, set two, set three, and each one will deal with something different. So this set was introduced, oh, I don't know, a month ago, six weeks ago, maybe? Thir May officially. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was right, it's right around 35 days because the 30-day deadline was Saturday. And when they initially introduced it, I don't think the I don't think they passed copies out and they yeah, weren't they, looking. They just kind of explained it without looking for public testimony. So then there's a time period which was up June 19th where you could submit written comments. We submitted written comments. I know other municipalities did. Um, and this one, this set, deals primarily, pretty much exclusively, with local options. And then there's a set of definitions that go along. Um, one of the things you'll notice as you look at this, if you're familiar with State Title IV, which deals with alcohol, that a lot of this is copied almost word for word from alcohol, and they they just tried to make it fit the fit marijuana, which, as I'll discuss, is one of the concerns that we had. So, if you look at our June 19, 2015 letter, and and one thing I should say because apparently. There was a, they got the word from the Attorney General's office that there was a glitch in the notice period, so they're actually going to have to re notice this. So we should be seeing that. So if anybody still wants to comment on set one, you'll be able to. This June 19th date is going to be extended. I don't know how long, and I haven't seen an official notice, although I haven't looked at the uh, website yesterday or today. They're going to repost on July 6th. On July 6th. The comment period okay. for this first set. So there'll be and plenty of time. When they repost on the July 6th. <clears throat> I believe it has to be 30 days. 30 days. I believe so. So we, we may even revise some of our comments, but this is what uh, was sent in. So I'm just briefly going to 
jump through it, and if you have questions now or later, feel free to ask. So one of their proposed regulations, you see under comment one there, dealt with the prohibition of importing or purchase of marijuana after there's a local option election. In, probably in Anchorage, this isn't, this isn't gonna be an issue, but uh, I mean, just my sense is nobody is, at least the vast majority, isn't in favor of exercising a local option that would completely do away with commercial marijuana, but you know, you can choose to say, have the sale of it, but not the cultivation, for example. You can pick and choose like that. But in any event, we're lawyers, we like things to be specific and uh, well-defined. So what, what struck us as odd here is that it, it says if a majority of the voters vote to prohibit the importation for sale of marijuana, then, and I underlined the part, it says they may not knowingly send, transport, or bring marijuana or marijuana products into the municipality or established village. If you take that at its face, it sounds like a vote to ban the importation for sale means no marijuana at all under any circumstances. And that, that just flies in the face of 1738 of Ballot Measure 2. I suspect what happened was they were copying, well I know they were copying what Title IV says for alcohol, because you can do that with alcohol, but both based on 1738 and based on State v. Raven, you can't just flat ban the personal possession of marijuana. So what we suggested is amend that language so that it says you can't import marijuana or marijuana products if they're intended for sale. Because that part you can ban. You can ban the commercial aspects of it by local option. Comment two is a much bigger uh, comment and probably the more critical one for us. What they're proposing to do by regulation is have what amounts to initiative and referendum or local option as it relates to marijuana. What seemed unusual to us is that they're trying to do this by regulation because Title IV of the alcohol statute provides local option by statute. The legislature said, here's how it works for alcohol. For everything else, Title 29 of uh, of the statutes is what gives municipalities the authority to do an initiative or a referendum. So you've got this unusual situation where they're trying to do it strictly by regulation. Now arguably they have that authority under 1738. Uh, our belief is that the authority isn't that broad and we cite some case law in here and also note that the areas that they are specifically supposed to do rulemaking in, and I've listed on page three to nine areas, they all really have to do with the day-to-day -day operations of commercial marijuana establishments within a municipality. They don't have to do with how local option works. Our concern is that you're gonna have local option procedure for initiative that's by regulation, but also we've got our own ordinance, which is authorized by state statute under Title 29, and then a municipality is left with which one do we choose? And whichever one we choose, we're probably going to get a lawsuit. So our recommendation is they just not do this now and wait for the legislature to meet and make a determination if they want to rely on Title 29 or if they want to adopt by statute something similar to Title IV. Okay, then uh, comment Todd, yeah. yeah, I'd like to ask you, with, with what you just said, basically then we would be waiting until January, February? I mean, Potentially, special, special although, special. although, I mean, again, my, my opinion would be, if somebody came forward, uh, now, first thing is, of course, the assembly can still vote to do certain things, you know, like I said, ban everything, ban one part of commercial operations. That's not really impacted by this. If someone started doing a petition process to have a ballot initiative locally on it, uh, I would just recommend that they follow our code, which is there because we're permitted to do it based on Title 29. So it's not that we couldn't. We would just do it as a normal initiative rather than 
modeling it after the alcohol related ones. So, but in terms of the legislature, right, we'd be waiting until they meet. Now, you know, again, uh, the thinking is there's not going to be any commercial activity legally until sometime in May. But people could <coughs> choose to have an initiative on it before that, too. So comment three on page four, this one's pretty straightforward, and that's just, uh, we think there should be a definition for marijuana brokerage facility. I think this came out of, this language came out of one of the proposed bills, maybe, that didn't pass. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like for small growers that wouldn't, they'd sell to plants to others, but not directly to the public was the idea. Anyway, we thought it should be defined if it's going to be in the regulation. But we didn't offer a definition. Uh, comment four is another one where we're a little concerned at, in the whole proposal for balance and local option, saying there must, it must include a brief explanation of the activity that each license type on the ballot may carry out. The concern there is that, you know, if there's multiple local options around the state, or maybe it's done different times, you're going to get something other than neutral explanations, depending on who it comes from. I know, you know, on statewide ballot initiatives, they will submit it and they talk about language at the AG's office, what is a neutral summary. Um, again, this kind of comes out of Title IV, but they're much more specific and narrow about the explanation they pretty much direct what it's going to say <coughs> so we think it should it should be up front more directed right from the get-go rather than leaving it up to each and every election each and every time what is it going to say about what does the brief explanation mean uh, comment five we just are talking about whether you need the word using in there or not when we talk about assisting that's one we might revise a little bit for our next set of comments. And then the last comment, comment six, um, the first excerpt we have there is again from Title IV, which is the alcohol statute, which allows people as part of a local option to adopt an amount of alcoholic beverage that would give rise to a presumption that the person possessed alcoholic beverages for sale. So. That is something that isn't currently allowed in the proposed local option rules. And we talk a little about the case law, about the Urban, or the, the uh, Raven case. His first name was Urban. I was just reading a story on him today in our legal magazine. Anyway, on the Raven case and then the Noy case, and what's allowed by case law by the Supreme Court. And so with that in mind, we think it would be useful for local communities to say, here's an amount above which it can be presumed it was being brought in for sale. You know, assuming there isn't any, they voted not to have any commercial activity. So that covers our comments. Any questions? Um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to make sure that we stay on top of our calendar. Uh, I'm especially appreciative of the fact that obviously you're staying on top of it and as you see these uh, phase one of the regulations coming out you've already gone into those and identified issues but if, if I'm uh, reading my calendar right best case scenario it's going to be sometime in August if we're lucky when actual phase one might get adopted uh, because if it's going back for public comment that won't close until August the 6th. I have no idea when they're going to be uh, meeting again. But, uh, and, and at the point that they finally adopt them, then you're able to make it very clear to us what we're actually doing. Right. I well, believe the next meeting after July is in October. I think it's the very beginning of October. Of the control board. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't they push that up? I thought, I thought Ms. Franklin mentioned it as the last time this group met. I thought she mentioned an accelerated schedule that um, I can't believe more meetings. Yeah, because they, they were shooting for November 24th. They have all of this ready, and somebody's going to have to accelerate a schedule. 
because right now phase two isn't posted yet, so there's going to be a 30-day notice on that as well, and we have yet phase three, uh, and if they're not going to be meeting again prior to that. And then the other kind of wild card I think we've got in here is that the governor actually goes ahead and appoints the marijuana control board, and we've got five new sets of eyes looking at this. And I don't know exactly uh, what would happen at that point, because I think they will probably look at this as marijuana, not as alcohol. And, uh, you know, the, the indication now is this is being basically just uh, as if it was alcohol. Uh, any My notes from the April ABC board meeting indicated that they were going to have a beginning of July, middle of August, beginning of September, and middle of October meetings. So I think, sounds, I think they are planning, yeah, uh, yeah. although it was assumed that the governor would have appointed a marijuana board by some point in the middle of the summer. I, I just can't imagine that they don't have some kind of accelerated schedule for board meetings to be able to address this because if they don't, we're going to be in May of next year still waiting for the control board to catch well, up. Well, and they may, I think originally, you know, they hope to keep each set sort of running independently on its own schedule. They're probably going to have to have overlapping public um, notice periods. I, I would think so. In order sure. to get where they want to okay. get. So, before we move away from, are, are you done with? I'm done with my meetings? comments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, I, I did have one question for Tom. Please. Um, I, I appreciate the, the, the fact that you, uh, you caught the, um, the apparent dispar disparity or, or the, the potential overlap between statutory and, mm -hmm. and uh, regulatory authority. Um, I, that, that's one that has kind of come to mind a couple of times. Um, <clears throat> with that in mind, perhaps this is a question for Lieutenant Case as well. Um, with regard to your comment six, <clears throat> um, the amount of marijuana that is presumed to be imported for sale, would, would you think that that would then become more of a statutory issue, perhaps related to Senate Bill 30 and the, and the criminal bill, the so-called criminal bill, um, and related sanctions versus the regulatory process that the control board is going to be looking at? It's, yes, as far as, because it's it's part of Title IV, and, and you know, basically we're saying if it's statutory for alcohol, it should be statutory for marijuana. Mm -hmm. Part that fits the overall theme of regulated, like alcohol. I, I wouldn't expect the legislature to set a specific amount, though, because the way this is written and the way it's written in Title IV is let the individual <coughs> village or municipality set that presumed amount over which it's presumed that it's brought in for sale. Okay. But overall, right, by statute, done by the legislature. It's it's interesting because I could see somebody importing a pound of marijuana into one community where that's totally legitimate, lawful, whereas you know that same amount could be the all sorts of hot water in another jurisdiction. I guess that's right. something that several bodies are going to have to wrestle with. And and I uh, just as background, I spent five years in Barrow as the uh, North Slope Borough Attorney, and the City of Barrow had. Uh, alcohol warehouse, all the alcohol had to come in there, and they set certain amounts uh, based on the type of alcohol it was, beer, liquor, wine, and so on, uh, because they're allowed to do that. And you know, if you're bringing in more than that, then the presumption is you're going to try and bootleg it. So it's it's an effective tool, and we think it should be there for marijuana. Thank you. And, I, and I'm not challenging you. I'm just trying to understand the mechanism. And who, right. Who gets to make the call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> Thanks, Todd. So our part two was Seneca was going to kind of walk through these uh, food for thought ordinances. Okay. Which is part of our efforts in local control. So we have four uh, draft ordinances in front of you, um, or broken down into four sets of ordinances, and two of them pull directly from the language of the initiative. So. The one, that middle of the page references false identification uh, penalty. That's language that's pulled directly from the initiative that passed from the language of 1738. And it's just a, a mechanism for us to get into our code, something that we can actually enforce. That was in the, in the ordinance, or in this um, initiative. 
the same thing with the one with the one that references restrictions on personal cultivation. That was also in the initiative itself, and again attempting to create a mechanism for enforcement under municipal code. Uh, the two others are uh, changes to our driving uh, Title IX, and one of them is specifically about open container. So there's a, a little bit of an adoption of some open container language that comes over from the state. This is the one that middle of the page says employers driving minors in control of property. And we are attempting to do two things simultaneously. One is regulate um, possession of marijuana in a vehicle while it's being driven uh, in the same way that we regulate open containers of alcohol in the vehicle while they're being driven. And the other is to bring over some exceptions that exist in state statute that allow for the common idea is a recorked bottle of wine and being able to put that in a trunk, for example, and, and drive home from a party. Uh, and we like that language um, and would like our statute to include those exceptions as well. And the other one, the last one is a long, longer set. This is the one, uh, this also states employers driving minors and controlled property in the middle, but it's the thicker packet. And this is specifically adjustments to municipal code for the crimes of minors operating a vehicle after consuming, minors operating a vehicle within 24 hours of being cited, and minors refusing a test. And this. Under the alcohol scheme, this is, since it's illegal for a juvenile to consume any alcohol, it's illegal for them to drive a vehicle after consuming any amount of alcohol. These currently exist in code under alcohol offenses. It's our attempt to just include marijuana, since it's illegal for a juvenile to <coughs> consume marijuana at all, to expand these codes to include marijuana as a component of that. Um, and so we've gone through all the language of the ordinances, added marijuana and related testing where needed, um, so that we can make sure our kids aren't, aren't being unsafe on the road. You had a question. You looked like you had a question. Oh no, I just always have something okay. to say, but <laughs> I'm sitting quietly uh, for now. <laughs> then my follow-up view is: <clears throat> these really have nothing to do with what state regulation. These are housekeeping resolutions that we need to go ahead, introduce, and take action. Yes, they have nothing to do with the regulation process whatsoever. They are fall under our criminal code. Right and uh, some of them are necessitated by the initiative itself and some are necessitated by the actions that people are likely to take sure. because of legalization. This would have been Senate Bill 30 that died in never, part, yes. the statute never did the housekeeping. Yep. And, and just a, a suggestion, as we said, you know, these are food for thought we came up with for the Assembly's consideration. Um, but it may be that you want to have the Public Safety Committee look at them as well, maybe after introduction or right. before, I don't know what, but it's probably be good if both committees sure. take a look and get it. That would input. typically be the chair's decision on where we would like to have them referred, but if the uh, body or the committee is in agreement, then I'm going to recommend that we go ahead and submit these for introduction, because I really don't want to be sitting here in January uh, with not have done our housekeeping chores to be ready because we're going to have, I think, uh, some relatively significant issues to deal with because I really think a lot of this is going to drop pretty heavy on us with local control and I'm ecstatic that you're staying on the top of that for us. Thank you. The other one I'll just mention, we don't have a draft copy yet because it's a little more complex um, and we're doing some research, but is uh, a marijuana club ordinance of some sort. We already have in Title VIII, a bottle club, which is for alcohol. But in doing our research, we're just we're trying to find that line between, you know, somebody invites friends over for drinks to their house, they might invite friends over to smoke marijuana. Well, that's one thing versus something that borders on being commercial that's a marijuana club, or in the case of alcohol, a bottle club, which is already uh, barred by ordinance. So. I think, depending on when our next meeting is, we'll try to have a draft copy of that consideration. Appreciate it. Amy? You kind of stole my, exactly, you're on the same uh, wavelength as me with this. You know, I've had an opportunity just to sit here in the few minutes I was here, which is not very much, and I pretty much got through the first two, or three, um, and glancing at the fourth one, um, it looks pretty straightforward, this, and I, I agree, this is, this is code cleanup, this is our, you know, so um, I would uh, suggest that as a committee, uh, we introduce it. 
that's possible. Yes. And then also I would ask that just for uh, ease of understanding, Sonica, if you could draft us an AM for each one, just in, in a nutshell, just very easily say, this is what this one does. This is what this one does. I think it'll help not only the other assembly members, but the public. Um, and um, so, Mr. Chair, with that, do you want to do it one by one? I'll make a motion and then as uh, a committee. Actually, I want, to, I want to make sure we're clear on the motion we want to make. <clears throat> I think the motion we want to make is that we direct Department of Law to the because it's from the Department of Law. Yeah. Do you want the committee members to be this submitted by? Well, that's what I was asking. Is um, if this is yeah, I'll just community. say I mean, normally I think when the Department of Law, that's you know, it'll say prepared by Department of Law, submitted at the request of the mayor. But considering, you know, right. we're a few days between changing mayors, that probably. Okay. Ms. Tucker. Um, just to follow up on what uh, Todd said, the Department of Law will be just in the name of the committee and we really need the individual assembly members listed as the sponsors and so I think that um, if you have three sponsors here who are willing to sponsor it then I think that you you don't need to pass a motion or anything you just need to to I would suggest that you just would be able to Correct the Department of Law. Let, let them know that you are the three sponsors and have it maybe reflected in the AM that you've asked them to draft, that it's on be that these are the three uh, assembly members who were present at the uh, committee, and they all uh, said that this was a good idea. And that's I agree. That's all you need to get it to public right. hearing. Just just a minute. So I can already see how this is going. So you know I'm just gonna be very blunt about this. Quite frankly we put something forward that has anything to do with marijuana and i hear 50 people testify that completely misrepresent the ordinance so um this is coming from the department of law obviously i've read it for 10 minutes um i would rather i don't even know if it's possible i would rather if this is at the request of the marijuana subcommittee be introduced rather than put my name on as an individual sponsor until i have time to digest it the code and the charter require that uh, items have individual sponsors, not committees. Okay, well that's what I was asking. Yeah. And so. I think that, that you wouldn't have to, uh, uh, you wouldn't have to, um, I appreciate what you were uh, uh, indicating there, and I'm thinking that you don't have to tell them today or right now. That well, I'm ready to go ahead on, on the first and second one. Those two, right to me, are no-brainers. It came straight from the ballot initiative. Um, <clears throat> I, I haven't had much time to review on that, sort of listening to him, what he was saying when he was um, going over them. Uh, I'm at this point not uh, ready to uh, put my name on, on any of these. I'd certainly like to have more time to review them. But, you know, I'll just follow up in saying, you know, I have no problem going forward with the first and second one. It comes straight forward from the ballot initiative. So I'll just tell you right now, I'll sponsor both of those two. Hopefully, Ernie or somebody else will go no, on. No, I, I skimmed them, and I'm OK with all four myself. So let's just follow up. Uh, Mr. Peterson can give you a call. He gets some reviewing. You call okay. when you're finished and yeah. you're ready. But I would like AMs, definitely, for all four of them. Right. Sure. And Ms. Stavosky, you're referencing, when you say one and two, you're referencing the false ID to purchase and the personal cultivation, correct? Uh, those are both, yeah, those yep, are both the first taken directly okay. from. But yeah. Senator, she'll be following up with you. Yeah, I'll probably be on all four of them. I just like to read stuff before I say I'll sponsor it because yeah. I'm going to take all the crap in the media for it. So. Yeah, we'll do. But uh, I do, uh, I do want to have this on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Are we good? That's all I have. That's all from the law department. Okay. Um, at our April, at your April meeting, we discussed um, an adoption, or adoption schedule options, schedule options for uh, land use regulations, and the committee was interested in what we call the more realistic option, which was option three, which had um, final adoption by the assembly in December, and working back from that, had draft, uh, a draft ordinance available to the public at the end of July. So still working off of that schedule, 
Um, the staff, and I think I've mentioned before that, you know, there's been a group of staff from various departments um, and utilities kind of getting together and educating ourselves on various issues and um, also there's been some research on uh, ordinances from other communities in Colorado and to some extent in Washington about what issues that they have addressed in their um, regulations on commercial marijuana. So we've been doing that. Um, I've started a very basic kind of framework outline but have not really filled in details yet partly because my direction has been to um, wait for the new administration to kind of bring their stamp to how this will all work and, and what, um, you know, their thoughts on, on this issue. Uh, so assuming that um, they do not provide me with different direction, I would think that we could have a draft ready to show this committee um, at your next meeting uh, in July, July 23rd, July. I think. Yes. Um, and hopefully maybe a couple days ahead of time and it could be reviewed and, and maybe some um, changes or whatever it, with the intent of having it ready for, you know, a more formal draft ready for release at the end of July. After that, we would be looking to set up um, some broad public meetings in August and September uh, to get more comments um, from the general public on the ordinance um, in preparation for preparing a staff report and potential recommended amendments um, before it would go to Planning and Zoning Commission. We'd be looking at P&Z at the very, uh, end of September with the finishing in um, at the beginning of October and then getting it to um, the assembly for introduction at the beginning of November and then some uh, hearings towards the end of November. I think you discussed the potential for having special meetings um, for yes. this because I know we, it kind of clashes with your budget. If um, we need budget to, we stuff. definitely need so. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm not as far along as I wish I were at this point, partly because of, you know, other workload pressures, but um, I think we can we can stay on the sure. schedule at this point. I, I understand exactly where you're coming from, and uh, I will be meeting early on with the administration. And, and I don't think I need to stress the importance of this and the priority. I, I think it will absolutely be a, a major priority uh, for them as well. So uh, that would that, that would pretty well keep us on schedule. I. I'm genuinely concerned about the fact I think we're going to end up out ahead of the state I think in, that's in, definitely in, in the rate that they're moving. And, and that's not a bad thing because uh, if, if we've got our plan ready, uh, if they do something that particularly impacts us, then we can go in and, and redraft what we've got. But if we waited till they were done to even start this, we would never, ever catch up. So thank you. Any questions of Erica? Oh, and I'm going to say one more thing. I haven't had a lot of time to coordinate with the clerk's office, but I would assume changes to Title 10, while they don't have to go to planning and zoning, we would keep them on track parallel with changes to Title 21 so that they are considered by the public and by the assembly at the same time because they will be very closely related. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Yeah. We're, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see the licensing regulation uh, and I'm a little bit hesitant about talking about it, but I'm under the impression that the process is, is, is going to be one, and I'm not sure how this is going to work if, if it does come down this way, is that if an individual wants a license, they've, they've got an obligation to give public notice of where they're going to get the license and where it's going to be located prior to applying to the state, and basically that they noticed it but they've had no protest, and uh, my concern about that is how do we know when they get notice? I mean, there are some confusing things, so I'm really anxious to see that, because once we get that, I think that's where the bulk of our work is going to really come in, is, is how we handle this, because it, it, under that process, it would appear to me that, you know, an individual could basically what would be considered a public notice. I, I don't know exactly what that means when you're not going through the municipality uh, and showing that there's no protest. And actually, when it gets back and comes to us, there could be a protest at that point. So there's some real uh, interesting scenarios we're going to have to work out in regards to that. Any other questions, America? Uh, 
focus the comments on the, as you know, you're going to get another shot to go back apparently and, and make comment on phase one, uh, or package number one of the, uh, the local option. And uh, the town hall meeting, we've had that on our schedule here to hold another one, but I've been holding off on that and will continue to hold off because what I'd like to do is when we actually have a town hall meeting, we're talking about something solid, not something hypothetical. Uh, because we can talk all day about whatever and until we know exactly what we're discussing, there's not a whole lot of point in coming together and, and having a conversation on that. And we may even, uh, you know, and definitely once the planning department begins to get some ideas together, that would be a real basis for a, a town hall meeting. Uh, so with that, we've uh, got time for public comment. Uh, if there's anyone that would like to share thoughts with us. Uh, I'm assuming that this time is working well for the meeting. Instead of noon, four o'clock, it gives uh, a good number of you the opportunity to be here. Any public comment? Seeing, hearing none, uh, Bruce. Oh, I was just going to make a comment uh, regarding your, your earlier statement about the, the process of permitting in the town hall and so forth. If the, uh, according to the agenda for next week's uh, control board meeting, with licensing and fees is going to be in that package too. Yes. And then I assume shortly thereafter they'll, they'll make it public, they'll start the 30 day public notice period. It might be valuable, and if I'm not mistaken, that public notice period will come will end after Erica's work has been largely finished, or at least the draft. So there might be an opportunity there, end of July, beginning of August, to have that town hall and to provide a sort of a flow chart of, of what we would envision the application process to look like, because mm -hmm. that, that way folks would have an opportunity to come to the town hall and talk not only about Anchorage process, but also about the state's process, right. and have opportunity to comment back to the <coughs> for that. Yeah, it, that is going to be, it's all going to be integral to each other. Mm -hmm. And right now, there is some confusion on my part about the fact that what that's going to be. So, yeah, it's very much. John, would you bang the gavel for me? Wait, wait. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 again. I just, I just have one more comment that um, was mentioned in, in the legal department's presentation. And I think we have to be. Uh, Cognizant of the fact that uh, if, if we start to become more restrictive than than the, the Raven versus Alaska case, we're going to end up in court, and we could end up in court, and end up in court over and over and over. And, and we're not proposing that, and I don't think we could become more restrictive than that because it, it would violate Raven. Right. Okay, I just wanted to make that point. I'm sorry, did I miss what? When's the next public town hall? We don't have the dates set. Are that, we going to set it today? No. That's what we were discussing. That's what we I thought really, I heard. I was just Yeah, we sure really need it. to get something for us to have a town hall meeting about. And when. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure I didn't miss the first day. No, no. John, one more time. Thank you. Well done. We're adjourned.